there at the start before the beginning of time with no point of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life and as you speak In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars are made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Yeah, every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation Stings your praises, so will I. So will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty. Once you have spoken, all nature and science will follow the sound of your voice. Ooh, 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 ooh. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you. So alive, I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so alive. Mountains bow in reverence, so will I. And if the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. Silence, so will I. And if the sum of all our praise still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. So you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave behind you so will I I can 
Today in our series Elevated Worship, we are considering Psalm 125, God our fortress. Remind you of the weeks gone by that we, on those three big words that we've been focusing on, trouble, trust and triumph. And today you'll get to experience that again in this particular psalm. So we encourage you to engage with us in worship. We encourage you to open your Bible and to read along and to participate in this service. We know that everyone is in their individual homes. Uh, we're not together corporately in the sense of physically being together, but in, we really do just worship together in spirit and in truth um, this morning. And so I just want to, as we open this, this service, uh, just pray for us as we do that. Father, thank you that we can be together this morning. Thank you, Father, that we can just hear from your word, that we can worship you. And we pray today, Lord, that you would be honored in this place we pray these things in jesus name amen i also want to encourage you we are going to over the next couple of weeks be showing some of the videos of some of the missionaries that are that we support as a church and the first missionary family that we want to just listen from hear from this morning is um our dave and nikki brenda and so listen in and enjoy what they have to say and the challenge that they bring as well hi uh... Uh, we're Dave and Nikki Bremner, and uh, we work with SIM International, um, and our job is leader development globally. So um, we're in the right in the middle of the COVID crisis, and we had a lot of plans uh, for events that we were running this year, and they all got put on hold. And so we're figuring out how to do our leader development in a completely new way. So we've had to. Uh, cancel a number of events and gather our people that we're working with uh, to do it virtually. Our ministry works like this. We uh, run two different ministries. One is training leaders at a global level. So these are leaders who head up our country teams around the world. And then the other one is to get uh, leaders who just start starting out in their leadership journey early on in their leadership and start working with them. And our plan with that is to let that overflow the banks of SIM uh, into other ministries. So our job is to head that up in the mission. Um, and uh, I am responsible for it. And Nikki, uh, why don't you t tell us what, exactly what your role is then? So basically my role is to, is to do anything that's administrative within the program, um, within the initiative. So um, I organize the events. Um, I do a lot of follow-up with uh, leaders, just making sure that they're complying with um, and providing us with um, information on what they're working on. Um, yeah, so just basically keeping everybody else in line. <laughs> yeah, Nikki, Nikki keeps us straight and uh, does all the event planning. And now we're needing to do in online event planning, uh, which is a whole new picture in itself. Our leader development uh, ministry is um, built around a relationship between mentors and learners. And so we spend quite a bit of time training people how to mentor well, uh, how to coach. And then we spend a lot of time creating a really good relationship of trust that can work between the, the mentors and the learners. Um, and uh, we've framed uh, leadership in SIM around the images of leadership that we find in the scriptures. Um, it's quite simple to, or quite, quite obvious quite often to see those images because the Bible always talks about leaders as being shepherds. And uh, we see Jesus as the good shepherd and uh, God our shepherd and Peter uh, is, 
instructed to be a shepherd, and then he instructs us to be shepherds under the under the great shepherd, under shepherds. Um, another image that's so po uh, common in the scriptures is that of the servant. And Jesus comes as the, the, the servant prophesied in the, the servant songs of Isaiah, and uh, he comes to serve and not to rule. And then he instructs us to, to serve each other. Um, and then the third image is that of the steward, um, given the responsibility of somebody else's belongings. So we're entrusted with what belongs to God um, as leaders. And then we've realized quite clearly that uh, leadership is such a complex thing and the whole image of the body of Christ with everybody with different gifts means that we need to share our leadership. So we very conveniently have the four S's of a shepherd and a servant and a steward and shared leadership. But that's uh, the, the approach that we do. Um, we've been privileged to uh, invest in about 125 um, global level leaders. Um, and we're planning on about 400 uh, earlier leaders in the next few years. So there's quite a lot that going on. We, we're right now trying to figure out how to make this happen in a virtual way, but that could quite easily shift over into able to doing it in person um, with the events like we've done before. But we're privileged to be able to work with some of the most amazing people in 60, 70 countries around the world. Um, these are all very high, high level, highly committed people, and we just love working with them. So our thanks go to all of you who partner with us in ministry through your support and your prayers and your encouragement. Um, we just uh, are so privileged to be able to do this, and we thank you for sharing with us.
show me what I don't know more of you. I'm desperate for your presence, longing to be with you. Lead me to a new place, more of you. Submit to anything Where I go church um, it is a great time to to be here with you I'm glad we get to spend this time together even if we're at different houses and different places but we still get to go through the word this morning we're in the middle of a series now called elevated worship and we are looking at a bunch of different psalms that were written um, these psalms are actually called the psalms of ascent and most scholars believe that these song these psalms were actually songs sung by the people, the religious, the Israelites, everyone who was coming to do their sacrifices and take part um, at the temple in Jerusalem. This is the songs that were sung on that pilgrimage, on that journey towards 
going to make their sacrifices. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. And today's topic is called Our Fortress. How God is our fortress, our protector, our provider, and how He's our refuge and He takes care of us, but He protects us from the attacks of the enemy. So let me open up in prayer and then I'm going to get straight into it. And then we're going to get straight into our reading this morning. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity that we have just to go through your Psalms, just to go through your word and just see how you are our mighty protector, how you take care of us, how you love us. And I pray, Lord, that we're all going through many different things right now. We all feel like we're attacked from every different angle, but we know that you are the one who can protect us and help us through it, Lord. You are our shield against the arrows of the enemy, Lord. And I pray that today this will become a reality to every single one of us. That you'll challenge every single one of us to hear your word this morning and be reminded that we have you on our side. We have you as our protector, our refuge, and our fortress in our lives, Lord. Thank you for your word and thank you that um, we have access to your word that we can just go through it this morning. Despite where we are, we still manage to be able to get together and go through your word and your truth. And I pray that you'll speak through me and that you'll speak to everyone else this morning. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. Alright, so let's get into our reading this morning. This morning's sermon is coming out of Psalm 125. So let us read through Psalm 125. Psalm 125, verse 1 to 5. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, both now and forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. Peace be on Israel. This is a beautiful psalm just about God's protection for his people. This would have been something that they would be singing out and saying, God, we recognize your protection. But what we need to do when we read the psalm is that we need to acknowledge that we too need God's protection. We are constantly attacked with challenges and from the evil one and things that are happening around us. There's constantly these attacks that are taking place and we all need God's protection. Hopefully as we break down things and during this message, you'll maybe see different areas in your life that you never knew you needed protection. Or maybe you'll be reminded of ways that God has been protecting you and taking care of you. But either, either way, hopefully we'll understand a little bit more about God's heart for his people and his desire to protect us and keep us safe from the enemy. Now, as you might know, in life, we don't always get attacked front on every single time. It's not always in one direction that we get attacked, but actually we get attacked in multiple directions and at multiple at the same time even. A couple of examples. Maybe you are struggling with your marriage. But then at the same time, you have financial strains and financial pressures with bills that you just can't pay. And there you've been attacked twice at the same time in different directions. Maybe you are struggling with your own addictions and issues and sins that you just cannot stop. But at the same time, you ostracized by your family and your friends because of it. And now you've just been attacked in two different directions. But what about when you're struggling with health issues? And then you go to work and you blindsided by your boss or your colleagues. But then at the same time, you have maybe your children which are constantly rebelling against you and won't obey you and won't listen to what you're saying and they're just attacking you. And then maybe even at the same time, you're actually at a low point spiritually. You see, the enemy uses all different things in all different directions to attack us constantly. And we don't even see it coming from the side and it comes and attacks. And this is why we need God. Because God protects us. He surrounds us. He protects us from every single angle. Because we don't know where we're going to get attacked from. And we don't know how we're going to get attacked. But we know that God is with us looking out for all those different areas. So that even when we don't see it, God still protects us from the, the attacks that can come in our way. So, no matter what side we get attacked, God has us covered. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. Is that God is going to protect us in areas and protect us in ways, even when we don't know. But we can rest in the fact, knowing that God does protect. And that we all need His protection. We all need Him as our refuge and as our strength. The first point that I'm going to be speaking about this morning is fortress. 
and I'm going to be speaking about what is the fortress and how is God the fortress and what does it mean that God is our fortress. Now, the psalm that we just read, Psalm 125, starts off describing the city um, surrounded by mountains. We see that in verse 1 to 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. Now, even though our psalm doesn't mention the word fortress specifically, that is what it's talking about. It is talking about this fortress of Jerusalem by describing the mountains that surround it. A fortress is a military term. It's a military term for a town or a place or a stronghold or a base that has been fortified, protected. Another, another definition is this. The definition says that it is a person or thing not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance. So basically a fortress is something or someone that has been protected and shielded by the influences of things outside of the walls, outside of that protection. And Jerusalem was a city that was a fortress. I'm going to show you now on the screen a map of what it looked like with the mountains and where the city was placed and how exactly it was a fortress in that sense. As you can see on the screen now, this is a picture of what the city of Jerusalem looked like. You can see Mount Zion there on top of a hill, but then you can also see by the contour lines on this topographical map that I've shown, how it's surrounded by a mountain range that almost makes a U-shape that goes around the city of Jerusalem. There was only one major entrance that you could come. You had to come through the valley and then up the hill onto Mount Zion. Now, this shows us that these mountains made sure that it, there was only one real way to enter the city and they were protected from attacks from the enemy. Because the enemy would struggle and find it difficult, in fact almost impossible, to attack Jerusalem by coming over the mountain ranges to then eventually attack Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was known as a fortified um, city, a protected city. And this is what the psalmist describes when he talks about the protection. He talks about the protection of God being like these mountains that surround Jerusalem, preventing the enemy from coming and attacking from all different angles. And these people who traveled, they would know this as they come on their pilgrimage. They would know the significance of the mountains that protect Jerusalem, the holy city of God. God's protection is prominent, strong secure, majestic in stature. It is amazing. It is never changing. It is stable and is constant and is always there. And this is why his protection is described as the mountains that surround Jerusalem, because those mountains cannot be used. God's protection surrounds us even when we don't see the attacks of the enemy coming. God is in the background protecting us in those different situations. And these mountains serve as barriers and obstacles that are placed around us or around our lives in order for God to keep us safe. You see, sometimes we have these mountains in our lives, which is actually God placing certain obstacles or barriers in our lives to protect us from the outside influences that might come our way. There's a man by the name of John Corson who describes these mountains in this way. He says, what might be seen as a problem for travelers are an effective protection for the citizens. You see, there might be these mountains in our lives which seem like problems or seem like these giant barriers to certain people, but they're actually there for our own protection between us and from preventing us from being influenced by people outside. In verse 3 to 5, it says, The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good to those who are upright in heart. But those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evildoers. You see, the psalmist is speaking about God protecting his people from the wicked influences of the people who would come. Maybe even the Persian armies and those who would come to try and attack Jerusalem. And if they had to overtake and take control of the city, they would influence God's righteous people. But the mountains protect them from being attacked in that way and that protects them from being influenced by the people around them and being influenced by those around them in the wicked. 
And the main thing I want to bring into your attention here is that sometimes there are mountains in our lives that we see as downfalls, we see as obstacles, but actually God's placed them there to protect us. And sometimes we don't recognize it because we see it as a problem instead of as a protection or a barrier like one of these mountains. I think about an example that I was talking to my wife, Courtney, about. We were planning and we were pretty adamant at the beginning of last year, 2019, that we were going to go overseas in, at, in December of 2019. So just a few months ago, we were adamant that's what we were going to do. We we're going to try and save up because um, we really wanted to be able to travel together somewhere overseas. But financially, things didn't work out that way and we couldn't make it. And initially, you'd see this as a mountain of finances. You can't get past and it's preventing you from doing something you want to do. But actually, in the end of the day, when you look back now, when I was talking to her yesterday, there was this coronavirus that is spread all across um, the world at the moment. But it started there in Asia and China and we wanted to travel to Thailand and maybe, and I'm not saying it definitely is, but maybe that lack of finance was a mountain that God put there to protect us from actually going to an area and maybe getting sick where we wouldn't even have known it until it was too late. You see, that might be a mountain, but it actually might be a mountain for protection instead of taking us uh, or being our downfall. Maybe there are mountains in our lives which prevent us from the bad influences of the people around us. Maybe there's a, you have an issue with transport and you can't get to a certain event or get together or function. Who knows? Maybe that was God putting a mountain in your path to protect you from being influenced for what might take place in that area. We don't know if that might be one of those things. Maybe there's a hardening of heart of someone who you really thought was your friend or your loved one. And there's a hardening of heart towards you and they just want nothing to do with you and they start to distance themselves from you. Maybe that is just a way that God's protecting you from being influenced in a negative way from these people. Just as he wanted to protect the city of Jerusalem from the wicked influences of the oppression of the Persians and the other um, villages and areas that wanted to attack and the other nations. Maybe there's certain things God's putting in place to actually distance us from negative influences or people who might influence us in a negative way. Now verse 3 specifically speaks about exactly that. Maybe you never got a promotion at work and you thought to yourself, this is a massive obstacle. I can't believe this is here. But maybe it's because God knows that if you had to take that job opportunity, it would lead you in a, di a direction which is far away from his plan from you. Maybe he has a specific plan and purpose for you. And if you took that promotion or got that promotion, it would actually head you in the opposite direction of where he wants to lead you and where he wants to work with you. There's something my mom always used to say. Um, we have, I think it's my mom's great uncle. He had shares in De Beers Mining Company when it first started. And back then you just had a piece of paper that said the deeds are, whoever holds that piece of paper owns the deeds. There's no signing names or anything. And to this day, if we actually still had those um, deeds in De Beers Mining, we would be filthy rich. Um, and my mom always says, maybe God remove that because someone broke into the house um, of my uncle or my mom's uncle and actually stole the deed and we lost all of that fortune but at the end of the day as my mom says maybe that was God saying I know that if you had to have all that money maybe it actually would have changed you maybe it would have made us less dependent on God maybe it would have made us even stay away from God because we'd feel we didn't need him anymore just like the rich man in the parable and so I just find it interesting that sometimes there's these mountains or barriers in our way that we think are our downfall, but actually it's a way that God's protecting us from being influenced or heading in a direction that He doesn't want us to go. And these mountains are there for protection and to take care of us and to protect us from sinful influences. One of the biggest things we need to realize when you face these situations and the confusion of when these bad things happen or barriers seem to pop up is... Is this part of God's plan? Is this something God wants to use for His glory? How can I use it for His glory? But we can find rest in Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, we can trust that God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He knows what the outcome would be in every situation. And so sometimes when we prevent it from going to a party or a work 
um, function or, we, or something happens or we can't do something or something happens to our cars or houses or something like that. Sometimes God knows that it's the best thing for us. And that by putting these obstacles in our way, it's not actually to prevent us from growing, but it's actually there to protect us from being influenced. And we can find trust and hope in the fact that God knows what's best. He knows the big picture. He knows where things would lead and where things would go. And we can trust Him. And that's going to bring me to my next point. My second point is trust. That we need to trust in God's protection. And that we can trust in God's protection. You see, we just heard how God is our permanent, immovable protection who surrounds us from every angle. And he works in ways that we can't always understand. But verse, verse 1 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. When we trust in God, we stand firm. We stand firm in our faith, just like Mount Zion stands firm in the city of Jerusalem. This holy hill in the middle of Jerusalem, it stands firm and prominent and proud. And we can do the same. That when we face trials, no matter how they come in our lives, when we face persecution, we'll be able to endure it. Just like Mount Zion endures eternity. Because it is an established mountain, an immovable object. And in the same way, we can stand firm because we trust in God. And this is because we trust in God that we can stand firm. We trust in God because we know that God is greater than our problems. That no matter what we face, God can overcome it. He can remove it. Or He can at least give us the power and strength to keep on pushing forward and, in, and to grow through those difficult times. We trust that God uses our brokenness and our situations and our messes to actually glorify Him and bring Him glory in what He does. And we trust that God has a plan that when something takes place in our lives, we can see that there might be a bigger purpose that, this, that God has allowed this to take place. And we trust that He has a plan. And that those things that we trust in can help us move forward and acknowledge His protection. We trust that God wants nothing but the best for us. God is a God who wants to take care of us and look after us and make sure that we aren't attacked from the enemy. He knows that we will be attacked, but that is why we need Him as our protection. But it also requires us to be patient. If we look at the life of Abraham, God made a promise to Abraham saying, Listen, I'm going to use you to make um, generations and a nation that can't even be counted. I'm going to use you to bless the people and the whole earth. But Abraham couldn't wait. He wasn't, he wasn't patient. He heard that God had this thing, had this plan for his life. But he wasn't actually patient enough to trust and wait for it to take place. So him and his wife took matters into their own hand and um, Abraham had a child with Hagar. And then there was all this, this te the tension and, and f conflict that took place. And eventually Hagar and Ishmael had to actually leave and be banished. And a lot of pain came out of the situation because he couldn't just wait for God's promise to be fulfilled. But we need to realize that when God makes a promise, he keeps his promise. When he makes a promise to protect us and take care of us, we need to hold on to that. And we need to trust that what he says will take place and will be there. Here's a few promises I just want to read to you of times that God's made a promise that we can hold on to because of who God is. Psalm 34 verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who tastes, takes refuge in him. Nahum 1 verse 7. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Psalm 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk, whose walk is blameless. Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And the final promise I just want to read to you. Matthew 6 verse 31 to 33. So do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. 
You see, we've received these promises that God will take care of us, that He'll protect us, that He'll be our refuge, our strength, and that when we are attacked from every different kind of attack that we might experience, God is there to protect us and He will take care of us through it all. We receive these promises and that is what we put our trust in. We put our trust not in the situation we find ourselves in, but in the promises that God gave us. The promises that He will take care of us. And that is where our trust is. And if we trust in those promises and we trust in who God is and His character, His love and His desires for us, then we can stand firm in our faith just like Mount Zion. This mighty hill that couldn't be moved. And we can take, our, um, we can take refuge in knowing that that is the God that we serve. A God who makes a promise and a God who keeps His promises for us. So this leads me into my third point that I want to share this morning. My final point that I want to talk about is peace. The peace that we can find in God. Now this is a very short point, but it's just the last point that I want to share. As our psalm ends with a statement in verse 5, which says, Peace be on Israel. And we can find peace in God. We can find peace in the protection that we receive. We find peace when we have our full trust in God's protection. You see, it starts by saying, trust in God, He will protect us. And peace comes in that moment, that sigh of relief, where we just realize, you know what? God has got my back. God is in control and God is taking care of me. I can actually find rest in that. And we find a peace like no other. A peace that surpasses all understanding comes from that moment where we trust in a God who we know and have full confidence in, confidence in, is looking out for us and has our side. Now, I've never been into the army. I've never been anywhere close to being any sort of soldier. So this is purely my perspective and opinion. But I would imagine that sense of peace being like a sigh of relief, similar to that experienced by a soldier. If there, I've seen plenty of war movies where you find a soldier who's somehow been separated from the rest of his troops. Maybe even he's been in a a little small squadron of about five or six people. And maybe the other five have all passed away. They've all been attacked and killed. And he's the last one standing. He's injured. He's being attacked from all different angles. His enemy shooting from his left, from his right, from the front. And he's just surrounded. And there's the enemies attacking and attacking. And he can't get out and he can't escape all these different things. But that moment of relief... When all of a sudden, over the hill comes this massive army, the full military, thousands of troops, all come with their tanks and their helicopters and whatever else they're riding and their little quad bikes and they all got their guns and the military and they're all coming. And this massive army comes in all of its glory and all of its force to come and save the soldier, to come and rescue him. And I can't imagine that moment of relief and that sense of peace that he has knowing that, you know what? I have my soldiers around me and I can now go home. And they come and they take him home. That sense of peace, knowing that no matter what attacks are coming from all different angles, he's got a protection around him that's coming and saving him and stopping the enemy from taking him out. And I feel like that is the same with us. We can find peace in knowing that in our spiritual lives, when we stay close to God, When we are digging in His Word and resting in Him and wrestling with the Scriptures and spending time in quiet times and seeking Him in prayer, in worship, in reading the Scriptures, we get that sense of peace when we realize as we dig through the Word that God is a God who protects. God is a God who surrounds us. And He's there no matter what is coming. He's coming and taking us home into that sense of safety. Just like the city of Jerusalem. The holy city was a place of safety. We can now be taken into that and have peace that we have a God who surrounds us. And the biggest thing we can take peace in is that that mountain that surrounds us, that mountain that protects us from outside influences, is God Himself. He is the biggest and most powerful um, mountain that can surround us as we find rest and peace in that. So I just want to conclude and bring you to a few more last thoughts. It won't be long. As I draw to a close, I want us to reflect on this today. When you look at your life, Do you recognize that we need God's protection? That we actually cannot afford to try and handle all these attacks on our own? Simply because we don't know when they're going to come, how they're going to be coming. And so we need a God who is constantly alert, a God who is ready for anything, and who can protect us even from the things we don't see. 
So do we recognize the need in our lives for God's protection and that he is our fortress? Do we recognize that God is working in mysterious ways, in different ways that we don't always understand? He's working in ways to establish these little mountains and barriers and maybe guardrails or shields around us, preventing us from being influenced by certain people or certain situ situations or even certain decisions that we want to make. God is protecting us by putting things in place. He puts things in place not for our downfall, but for our protection. And now I'm not saying that every negative thing that happens in your life is God putting it there just to protect you from something. But all I'm saying is that we need to start asking us the question. What would have happened if this situation allowed to play out? If that barrier wasn't put there? Maybe God is actually trying to use certain things. Let's take a look at lockdown for example. Maybe even this is a situation where God is actually trying to separate us from the influences of our everyday normal lives. Where we are, would normally constantly be influenced in many different ways, negative ways, that might be drawing us astray from Him. Maybe this is God putting a barrier in us, um, stopping us from even attending churches on a Sunday. Um, maybe just for the sake of, maybe as a church, we were being too complacent. It just became a thing of we going there, we attend church, and then we go home. Maybe this is a way of God really making us understand that it's a, it's a spiritual relationship between us and Him. And that He wants us to really get our perspective in, in line. So who knows what God is putting in our place all the time. But I really just want to challenge us to change our viewpoint on the situations we face. Because by changing our viewpoint, we can find peace in God. By changing our viewpoint, we can see a situation as a way to glorify God because we know it's there for our protection and we can acknowledge that God is taking care of us. So, God is our fortress. There is nothing too big. There is no attack that He is not prepared for. There is no situation we can go through in our lives that God can't handle. He is our fortress, our hope, and we can put our trust in Him. If, but the one condition, though, to experience this um, protection to experience him being our fortress requires us entering into a relationship with him so i want to encourage you connect with someone maybe a family member who you know is a believer if you don't have a relationship with god or even just go onto our church website and connect with someone through the details that are on there but make a decision because when you make that decision you then gain that protection from god you enter into a place of peace because he's got your back and you know that no matter what comes your way you can find rest and refuge in His fortress because He is our fortress. I just want to close in prayer. Lord, I thank You that we could go through Your Word and break it down. And It might seem like such a short little psalm, Lord, but there's so much to it. I thank You for Your protection. I thank You for the, the ways that You are protecting us even when we don't see it and we don't know it. Or even if there's ways that You are protecting us that we don't fully understand or enjoy. I pray, Lord, that You'll just help us to... Give thanks and praise to you, Lord, and acknowledge that you are working in our lives constantly. That there are things that have been coming in our lives, attacks that have come, that you've already protected us from, that we didn't even see, that we didn't even recognize. And I just thank you that you are powerful and mighty, and thank you for the work that you are doing in our lives. I pray that you'll continue to protect us during this time of lockdown, and that you'll continue to take care of us, and just draw us closer to you. Despite the lack of fellowship on a Sunday, we still get to connect with you through our services online. And I just want to thank you for that opportunity. In your mighty name, I pray. Amen.
children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you Well, I'm so glad that you were able to join us this morning. And I don't know how it is that God spoke to you. Perhaps he encouraged your heart through something that Clive said or through a song that was sung or perhaps through something that Dave and Nikki shared with us this morning. Or perhaps he has challenged you in some way. Uh, and I want to just encourage you this morning as we close the service to to really take what God has done in your heart this morning seriously. Uh, if there are changes that you need to make, to make those changes. If you need to seek prayer, to, to go and speak to somebody and, and ask them for prayer. If perhaps today you need to commit your life to Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, then to do that. Don't let this day go past without doing that. But let's close now. Thank you for joining us today. It's been good to be together, even though... Uh, we do so apart from one another, but at the same time worshipping Him. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that we've been able to be together. We've been able to learn that you are our fortress, that we can run to you. And uh, I thank you for that this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would continue with us now into this day, that you would be our strength, that you would be our courage, um, and that you, we would truly be triumphant in our trust of you. We thank you that you know the troubles that we face, you know the difficulties that we face, and we can trust you in the midst of those with the assurance um, in our hearts that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, for this time, and uh, we pray these things now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless, and lovely to have you with us this morning, and go well, and God bless.